أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of the Hijjah reminds us of the anniversary for the wedding the most precious and valuable wedding happened in the history of Islam, and that is the wedding of Imam Ali السلام, and Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. The marriage between Imam Ali and Fatima was a simple, a very simple one. And at the same time, it was the symbol of religious arrangement for the wedding. What are the requirements, indeed, for marriage? And we need to focus on them when someone comes to ask the hands of our daughters, or we are going to apply the same for our sons when we go to other families. Many people are after qualifications, degree, background, business, car, and house. How much does this person earn? Whilst we read in the whole history of Imam Ali السلام, that he did not own anything. He had only one shield, and that shield was sold to make what is called Mahru Sunnah, or the dowry, which now it is highly recommended that Muslim families stick to it. This is 500 mithqal of silver, or what is equivalent to nowadays to the value of 480 pounds. Extravagance in giving dowries to the wives or the families of the bride asking for has been a problem throughout the centuries. Let's remember one incident which caused a lot of damage to the Muslim community and that was the marriage of the Abbasid Caliph Al Ma'moon with Puran, daughter of one of the Barmaki wazirs of the time. History tells us whether Al Tabari or uh, Al Kamil ibn Al Afir and Avi, uh, all other historians, that the dowry specified for this marriage, the marriage of Ma'moon, to Puran was one million dinar, bearing in mind that dinar is equivalent to 4.6 grams of 18 karat gold. So when it is million, which means that four tons, 4.6 tons of gold of 18 karats, and that is a huge amount. They talk about the feast, and some 30,000 goats were slaughtered and arranged for this, 60,000 chicken, 400 cows, and all that. Our question is this, that was it from the personal ownership, from the own pocket, of the bride, her father, or the bride's father, or it was from Beit al Yes, the answer is that all this was spent from Beit al which means that there were hundreds of thousands of people who were hungry, who could not afford even the simple way of feeding their children. They were deprived from the shares in Beitul Mal, the treasury of Muslims. But you see, a caliph 
who is referred to be his father and himself living the golden age of Islam. Because normally when we talk about the civilization, the Islamic civilization, the authors mention in their books that describing that age, age of Harun Rashid and al Ma'mun to be the golden age of Islam. And now we see this extravagance expenditure on that. Whilst we see that the Mahru Sunnah is as simple as equivalent to 500 mithqal of silver, as I said, that value is minimum. Then, all pious families, instead of charging $100,000, £40,000, or some other type of gold or any type of wealth, they stick to a copy of the Holy Quran and Mahru Sunnah, which was the dowry given to Lady Fatima, sallallahu alayhi So, this is the first lesson we learn. And we remember, so it is not repeating the history, rather than making use of certain lessons we learn as our role models, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Lady Fatima, sallallahu alayhi and all other Imams teach us, teach us how to behave and how to follow their footsteps. And when we remember first of the Hijjah as such a great day and consider it a source of happiness and sharing the same joy with that history, that event, of course, we appreciate the values of such great marriage. Many people came to the Prophet وسلم, who are wealthy, and some of them suggested that I'm going to give to your daughter this amount of camels, some sort of gold, and again, that mentality to show that they are high class, a part of the high class society and they are rich enough to make the bride happy. This is the mentality of people of that time. But when a person like that came to the Prophet وسلم, saying, the Prophet said, what are you saying? If you want the wealth of the world, I have access to it. And he took some pebbles and they turned into jewels and pears. And he threw that in the front of the gentleman to say that, look, if you want to have access to wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to do so. But we are not doing so. We are examplars of modesty and being in the same level of ordinary people and that is a lesson for us. Another lesson which is very very important for us when we arrange for weddings is this brothers and sisters. Nowadays many people have the mixed gathering, mixed wedding. In mixed wedding ladies are wearing perfume, appearing in a very nice way according to them, dressed in a way that it is good when it is clearly and specifically for the ladies to see one another. But when unfortunately it is heard here and there in the West and sometimes maybe in some Muslim countries that they arrange the party where all ladies who are dressed in the maximum of ornaments and beautification and cosmetics all mingle with men and see no problem about it. Let's make it very clear that this is not permitted in Islam. The best way is that ladies have their own sections, men 
as, as we do it here in our center. There are two different halls. Many Husseiniyas, many Imambaris, you see that there are two different halls when ladies have their freedom, liberty to wear whatever, to act in a way, but that is purely and specifically for the ladies to do so. But that mixed wedding, when people feel to mingle and enjoy themselves, and that masya, that sin, will be the source of keeping both the bride and the bridegroom away from Allah's mercy. Allah's mercy is a must, is needed for blessing the marriage. So how and why people ignore this fact and allow themselves to break the laws and ignore that fact that any disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the source of misery. And we notice that many, many times. Unfortunately, in many families, they hold the party for wedding like that. And after two months or three months, the disputes start functioning and people see the consequences of their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, we need to change our habits to make them in line with the rulings of Sharia. The way that we sit, the way that we meet, the way we arrange for our weddings, the way we handle the education of our children. So if we show indifference to the rulings of Sharia, neglect our, neglect our duties, of course this will lead, this will lead to the opportunities of corruption and going stray from the path of religion and faith. The last point here is that we have to focus on two things when a person comes to ask the hand of our daughter. How committed are they to religion and religious rulings and how akhlaq and manner they have. So once these two are there, of course, the Prophet wasallam guaranteed that if you focus on these, I will guarantee the other thing, the prosperity, the wealth, the success in life to follow. But if you focus only on the beauty of the girl, on the wealth of the girl, in, on the class that this girl belongs to, you will see that you will be deprived from all of them. So in keeping in line with the Islamic teachings, with the Quranic teachings, secures the happiness for this life and hereafter. Once again, I congratulate you for such great day of the marriage and wedding anniversary of Imam Ali السلام, and Lady Fatima Salamullah alayha, who was described in the Quran as al kawthar when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the Prophet. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna a'atainaka al-kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar, inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Kawthar means the abundance of goodness. And the abundance of goodness is evident in the life of Lady Fatima sallallahu alayha, that she produced the two youths of paradise, the masters of youth in paradise, Imam Hassan and Hussein, and all the Imams from the descendants of Hussein, until the awaited Al Mahdi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance and allow us to benefit from that. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.